Well, hey there now, Facebook. How y'all doing? Hey, I hope you have a, you had a great day today. Today is September 16th. It is Wednesday. And my name is Mick. And uh, I'm an Episcopal priest. I serve two parishes in Ludington, Michigan. And if this is your first time on, on the broadcast with us, on the site with us, it's great to have you with us. Every night we gather around 9 o'clock, the uh, members of the two parishes that I serve here in Ludington, the first being Emmanuel Lutheran and the second being Grace Episcopal. Uh, we gather online every night at 9 o'clock and we do just check in with each other, see how we're doing. Uh, we say some prayers for people who've asked us to pray for them. We say a devotion, we share a story or two, we read a little scripture, and we share an adult beverage together. And tonight... I'm going back to my yingling, my Oktoberfest. And I got word yesterday, uh, yingling announced in cooperation with Molson, Coors, and Stroh's, I think it is, uh, a joint venture to expand yingling into states where they are not available yet, Michigan being one of them. So it looks like 2021, next year, yingling will now be available in Michigan. And it's about dang time. <laughs> you would have thought, I moved here seven years ago. You would have thought, you know, step one, Mick moves to Michigan. Step two, Yingling follows close after. Just makes logical sense, actually. <laughs> mm. The taste of fall in a bottle right there. That's good. So why don't we go ahead and check in and see who's all in there. Actually, let me, uh, sorry, I didn't tell you about my day. Um, actually, today, highlight of my day today was um, I had a pastor's lunch. Uh, one day a month, all of the pastors are invited together to uh, a lunch. Uh, all the pastors that serve congregations in Ludington. Um, and there's about six to eight of us that normally get together. And... Uh, I love that time with my fellow clergy in town here. And we laugh, probably laugh a little too much, a little too hard. Um, and we rib each other kindly, gently. Um, and we learn about each other's traditions and how each other's parishes are doing. We learn about opportunities to serve people in Ludington. And it's just a very good time to get together with the other pastors. And uh, they're my friends. And I like that time very much. So that was about the highlight, and then I tried cooking something for dinner tonight that didn't quite come out the way I expected. I tried to do it in an Instant Pot instead of a slow cooker, and it just didn't come out the way I'd hoped it would. But it's edible, but eh. Anyway, who do we have in the room with us tonight? Hey, we got Dee and Dick Falk there. Hey, guys, good to see you. Sharon Walton is here with us. Kathy Iteen and Ben, I bet, is right there next to her, probably at the ranch. Mike Burns and Priscilla, good to see you guys. Chris Simpler and Jenna from Ludington now, no longer from the Poconos. Um, Sharon Welton is saying good evening all. Mike is sending greetings from he and Priscilla. Carolyn Fitch, who I just exchanged a text not two minutes ago. Hey, Carolyn, good to see you. Uh, D. Falk says hello, everyone. Kathy says makes sense to us. Good evening. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you're commenting on there, whether Yingling should have followed closely after me or whether I tried to cook something in Instapot and it didn't come out right. Uh, no need to expand on that, okay, Kat? <laughs> and Dee says, laughing together with friends is good. Oh, man, it is. It absolutely is. You see, when, you, when you're in with a group of people or when you're... Um, when you're with people who, who mean something to you and there is nothing between you, okay? When there's no strife between you, when there's no conflict, when one person isn't holding a grudge against another and everything is out on the table and it's all good, it is a good time. There's laughter and there's um, you build a relationship that way. But if one, one of the parties holds something against, well, against that other person or maybe against 
somebody else altogether and they're just concentrating on it so much that they can't enjoy the relationship that time um, with their friend, well, then it kind of gets in the way of stuff. You see, take, for example, my lunch today with my fellow clergy. Man, if I'd had something against one of the, those other people around my table, well, I might be a, a lot more guarded about what I say. I might not enjoy myself as much. I might not be as free in my conversation with them. And, and there could be some, well, there could be some strife. Or maybe I, I'm concentrating on an argument I just had with somebody early in the morning or something I'm holding on somebody else and I'm not fully able to be in the moment with my fellow clergy at that lunch. You see, that, that also leads to the inability to, well, to strengthen our bonds of comradeship, our, our, our relationship building, you know? And, and it doesn't just stop with people that we know and share time with in this life. It, it's really like that with our relationship with God, too. See, when, when we're holding something against somebody else, when, when something is eating away at us so much, our concentration can sometimes be taken away from, well, being in communion with our Heavenly Father. And when energy is taken away from that relationship, it's not really able to fully develop. So how do we just, well... How do we let go of those other things that might get in the way of fully developing a relationship with God? The devotion writer writes about this very topic tonight. It's, it's titled Figs and Forgiveness, okay? And uh, we're going to see where he goes with this. In the meantime, we see Frank. Hey, Frank Kelly, join the room. Hey, man, it's good to see you, Frank. Thank you for being here. If you have your Bibles with you and you want to turn to Mark, the Gospel of Mark, uh, we're going to be taking a look at that. Mark chapter 11, we're going to start at the 20th verse. And I am using a version called the NCV or New Century Version. You may have another version and words might be just a little bit different, but that's okay. Meaning's all going to be the same, okay? And if you don't have your scriptures with you right now, don't worry. Sit back, relax. I'm going to read it to you, okay? All right, so Mark chapter 11, verse 20, and we're going to 25. And it is entitled, The Power of Faith. The next morning as Jesus was passing by with his followers, they saw the fig tree dry and dead, even to the, to the roots. Peter remembered the tree and said to Jesus, Teacher, look, the fig tree you cursed is dry and dead. Jesus answered, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, Go, fall into the sea. And if you have no doubts in your mind and believe that what you say will happen, God will do it for you. So I tell you to believe that you have received the things you ask for in prayer, and God will give them to you. When you are praying, if you are angry with somebody, forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also forgive your sins. Mm. And the devotion that goes along with the scripture, and we take our devotion from the Lutheran devotional, Christ in Our Home, it is entitled tonight, Figs and Forgiveness. And the devotion writer writes, In Mark... 11, 12 to 14. Jesus walks by a fig tree, hoping to find figs to satisfy his hunger. The tree has no figs because it is the wrong season. Still, Jesus curses the tree for its lack of fruit. In today's reading, Jesus and his disciples come upon this same tree the next morning and find it withered. Jesus suggests that a tree without fruit and a prayer without forgiveness cannot fulfill their intended purpose. I wonder sometimes about my prayers and what effect they have. No mountains, little or literal or figurative, seem to move when I pray. 
Yet I do know this. When I'm holding a grudge in my heart or feel angry about what someone has done, I have trouble sensing God's presence and love. Forgiveness of others and trusting and a trusting relationship with God go hand in hand. And when they do, the possibilities of prayer are endless and its power vast. And the prayer that goes with the devotion tonight is forgiving God. Help me forgive others just as you forgive me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the prayer concern for tonight is for people who engage in prayer as a ministry. <laughs> Again, we are on this theme that we've been on uh, through the readings lately here. How important it is to forgive other people. And there's a lot of questions about what does it really mean to forgive someone? Well, about the best that I can do in my understanding is when you release someone from owing you anything. Okay? Let me put it to you this way. If somebody ever does anything to hurt one of my children, oh, that is about the quickest way uh, to get me over the edge, okay? Now, I may be able to get to the point where that person that has hurt one of my children, I could get to the point where I can say to them, you don't owe me anything. But I can also say to that person, you will never be around my children again. Okay? A lot of people don't think that that is forgiveness. Oh, I, I do think that, that that is forgiveness. Um, there may be um, other ramifications. Uh, you don't owe me anything, but you and I are no longer going to have the same type of relationship that we used to have. Because you've done something that I need to protect either myself or some other people. You don't owe me anything from that. That is done. That event is over. Hmm. Sometimes if that's the best that I can do, well, then that's the best that I can do. Hmm. So let's see. Other people have been coming in the room while I've been just yakking away here. Let's see who's here. So I said hi to Frank. Oh, Larry Reese is in. Hey, Larry, good to see you, brother. Hope you and Kathy are doing well. Mike, Mike Tadavito from New York. Hey, man, I am so glad to see that you're here with us. And Larry says late again. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. And my, my cousin Pam is here. I wonder if Joe is sitting right there next to you. Um, my cousin Joe and Pam. Good to see you guys. And Joyce Uziak is here. Joyce right here from right here in Ludington. Joyce is a parishioner at Emmanuel. Good to see you, Joyce. And Patsy Jarvie is here. Hey, Patsy. Good to see you. Ah, Joyce says hi from Joyce and Jack. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I see 14 people in the room right now, but that's only 14 logins. Um, with the number of couples that we have watching together and everything, we pretty much have... Well, dag near as much in this room every night as we have um, either in person or watching online on Sunday mornings. Um, and that's awesome. I think that's a great thing. It's fantastic. Thank you guys for all being here. Hey, we're going to switch now over to... Switch now over to... Yeah, I'm Pennsylvania Dutch. That's the way we speak. Um, we're going to switch over to our prayer list now. As it is Wednesday night, and we pick up tonight um, with D, and uh, we're joining D for uh, her kids in Oregon, and all the people that are fighting the wildfires out there, and people who are suffering with uh, breathing issues uh, if they have underlying issues like like asthma and things like that. The, the the smoke that is just so thick in the air there. My brother lives in San Francisco. 
and he's been describing to me what it's like there. And well, we pray. D, we pray with you for your kids and for everybody affected. Frank, we're pl praying for Kyle Butler, um, the commander at the Legion tonight, reached out to his wife in Anchorage and had a good conversation with her. And we're trying to do what we can to support this family. Um, this young man is from the Ludington area. And uh, he was he's a veteran who was involved in a an ATV um, accident. And he is currently in the hospital. He is out of a coma that he was in and he is responding. And those are all great signs, but it's going to be a long recovery. Um, and let me see here. There we go. We pick up with Sharon. We're joining Sharon for Bob and Julie. And Tim, we're praying for Aubrey as she is in her, and all our first year students at college. Um, it's, it's definitely a different year for our college students who, um, some are able to go um, to, cl to classes in person and some are online. And, oh, it's a mess, isn't it? Yeah. Kelly, uh, we're praying for your sons, Adam and Christopher, as well as for Elizabeth. And we're also praying for everybody um, who is in the path. I know Kelly isn't in the path of these storms, but for the people in Alabama and uh, Louisiana and, and the people in the South and George, I guess George is getting hit with it too. Um, it's a wide swath that this storm just is, um, wow. So we pray for everybody's safety and um, that the storm quickly loses strength and it just becomes a rain event. But right now there's some pretty strong winds out there. Jim, we join you in praying for our friend Woody and my, bro my brother Gene, the Marine. Uh, who continues to recover from his surgery, as well as his son and daughter. And Sonia, we're joining you in prayers for Sarah and your brother and nephews. So we'll pick up there tomorrow night, okay? All right. And now we turn our attention to the last office of the day. It's called Compline. We take this office from the Episcopal tradition. It is a monastic type of prayer, uh, Benedictine. And, well, it opens with the invitatory, invitatory or the opening sentence. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. And the psalm appointed with this evening's office is Psalm number 134. Behold now, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that stand by night at by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. The Lord, who made heaven and earth, bless you out of Zion. And the lesson tonight is taken from 1 Peter. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, the ad your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace. Let your blessing be upon us always. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the canticle is the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. 
and now a prayer for those of you who will be joining us first thing in the morning as part of your morning devotion. Holy Father, thank you for loving me, for walking with me, and caring about the smallest details of my life. Fill me with grace, Lord, that I may have the strength to face what is before me today. I know not what today will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. Please give me your wisdom and fill me with your peace. May I show the same grace to others that you show to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now, may the almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and always. Amen and amen. And we'll go one more time, see if we have some more. Ah, Frank Kelly sends a note. Uh, FYI, Kyle is doing much better. Yes, I did get that word from Commander today. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. And Jack Jack Conklin is watching. Now, I don't, uh, Joyce is signed in here, and Jack is also signed in here. And I would imagine that they're sitting right next to each other. So, I don't know how you guys are both signed in. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, no matter how you're signed in, it's great to have you here. Well, guys and gals, that brings us to the end of our time together. Uh, I want to thank you for being here, and uh, I want to wish you a restful night and a beautiful day tomorrow, and I hope it's even better than today was for you. So until then, be well, be safe, love each other, and love God with all your heart. And as my pop says, good Lord willing, a crick don't rise. I'll see you right here tomorrow night. Until then, good night, Facebook.